At the end of the previous video, I had asked you to think about the bug in this version of the power function. Now, if you remember, we had started discussing this code uh, by focusing on the case when n is positive. So a natural question to ask is, what if n is not positive, meaning it's negative or zero? So for such an n, when we come to this test on line three, this condition n greater than zero is false. Now we have said that in a while loop, we execute the body, meaning lines four and five in this case, we execute this body as long as the condition is true. So if the condition is false immediately, we will never do the body of this while loop. We will immediately jump to the end of this while loop. So we'll come to line seven, and return ANS. Now ANS is initialized to 1 on line 2 and so this function will return 1 when n is negative or 0. So the answer 1 is uh, the right answer if uh, n is 0 but if n is negative then almost certainly this is the wrong answer uh, and I leave it to you to figure out how to fix this bug to work for all values of n. So let's quickly review the difference between if and while. Now in both cases as we have said this condition could be false to begin with. In that case we skip the body. We do this for if and we do this for while. Now in an if statement we can have an else attached to it to catch the case when condition is false. We can't do this in the while statement. But if the condition is true, then the if statement executes the body exactly once. The condition is true, we go into the if and we do the statements in the body. Whereas for the while loop, if the condition is true to begin with, we do the statements in the body and then we loop back up and again test the condition. We keep doing this looping as long as the condition is true. Now, typically inside a while loop, those statements inside the body will modify some variables so that this condition eventually becomes false. If we don't do this, if our body never modifies the variables in the condition, then we will end up with an infinite loop. So let's take a look uh, at these uh, while loops with a very simple piece of code. We'll write a function to compute just the sum of the integers from 1 to n. Now I know there's a formula for doing this when n is greater than or equal to 0, but let's pretend for now that that formula doesn't exist and let's write this sum to n function. So it's going to return an int and it's going to take this one argument which is an integer n and it's going to calculate this sum. So just like before we'll need a variable to accumulate the answer. So let's call that variable sum in this case and it seems reasonable to initialize it to zero because we haven't added up anything yet. Now we'll do our steps in the middle over here and right at the end, just before the function uh, ends, we will return this sum, this overall answer. So now we're just going to follow the formula that's given, this summation. So we have to sum up the values of i, where i starts at 1 and goes up to n. So we'll do exactly that. We'll set up a local variable i that starts at 1 and it will go up to n. So as long as i is less than or equal to n, we want to do something. And what is it that we want to do? We want to add i to this variable sum. We want to accumulate this value. So this seems like a very natural and obviously correct uh, function, but in fact it has a bug. Can you see what we're missing? We're missing something extremely important, and that is this statement. Inside the body of this while loop, we do not update the value of i. 
Now, why is that a problem? So imagine n is, let's say, 10. We initialize i to 1. Then we check, is i less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So we do the statements in the body of the while loop, which is just adding 1 to sum. But then we come back to the top, and again, i is still less than or equal to n. We didn't modify the value of i. So obviously, if we don't modify the value of i, the same value of i, 1, will be added repeatedly to this variable sum. So to fix this, we have to add this statement, i equals i plus 1. The only question is, should we add it here before the assignment to sum? Or should we add it here after the assignment to sum? Pause the video and think about this, and then we'll discuss. So the right place to add this is after we have updated the value of sum. And you can check this step by step, as we just will, on a Python Tutor. Now, once we have done this, uh, we will have uh, a working function. Uh, but I want to point out that, you know, we have many, many different parts of this while loop. We have the initial value of i being initialized. Then we have the body. And then we forgot to do this statement earlier, i equals i plus 1. And we, as a programmer, especially when we are getting started, it's very easy to forget all these different parts to the loop. So fortunately, uh, there is another way of writing this loop uh, using a different syntax called a for loop. So to explain what a for loop is, I'm going to highlight uh, the key parts that we will want to keep together. So we have initially this statement i equal to 1. This is initializing this variable i, which we are using to control the loop condition. This is sometimes called the loop variable. So this is the key variable that determines how many times the loop is going to run. So this is one piece of information. The other piece of information is this condition. Uh, we are checking if we are still inside the loop or should we quit. And then the third is this update, the new value of i. And right now, as we write a while loop, these three important pieces of information are all on separate lines and it's easy to forget about them. Now imagine your body of your while loop was very, very big then you can see that these three statements might be separated from each other by quite some distance in your code. So rather than having that situation, C provides uh, this for loop syntax. And you see that the three pieces of information, the initialization, the condition, and the increment all happen on the same line. So as programmers, this is much easier to think about once we have understood what the for loop is saying. So the while loop and the for loop in, on this slide are doing exactly the same thing. In this for loop, we are saying there is this variable i, which we don't initialize just yet, but inside the for loop, we can initialize i uh, as this first part of the for loop. Then there's a semicolon, and then we put the condition. That's the same condition we put in the brackets of the while loop. Another semicolon. And then there is the update. And although we have written it here on the first line, it's important to remember that the update is the last thing that happens just before we end the body of the loop. So this statement i equals i plus 1 will happen after the statement sum equals sum plus i exactly as we want it to be in the while loop. So these two pieces of code are exactly the same. Now the same uh, for loop can actually be written uh, in a slightly more compact way. It often is the case that this var these variables i, these loop variables, are only used for controlling a particular loop. We really don't need them elsewhere in the function. This isn't always the case, 
but it is often the case. So C also provides this other syntax for the for loop where you can declare the uh, loop variable i inside the for loop itself. So the uh, variable i is in the first part, you just declare it and initialize it right there. And this variable i is only used for the body of the for loop. We will make this point uh, clear again when we look at the visualization on Python Tutor. Then we have the same condition, i less than or equal to n. And rather than saying i equals i plus 1, there's a slightly more uh, compact syntax, plus plus i increments the value of i by 1. Similarly, uh, a statement like the new value of sum is equal to the current value of sum plus i can be written a little bit more compactly as sum plus equals i. Now, you don't have to use this syntax. It's perfectly okay to say i equals i plus 1 and sum is equal to sum plus i. But I'm showing you the syntax because you might see somebody else's code that uses this syntax and I don't want you to get confused by it. Well, let's now take a look at our code on Python Tutor. And the link that I have uh, at the bottom of this uh, video is actually a slightly buggy version of the same function. So in the next video, we will take a look and see how that bug shows up when we do the step-by-step -step, uh, calculation on Python Tutor. And we will also replace the while loop, which is what we have uh, in the given code, with a for loop and see how uh, this compact version of the for loop actually behaves.